one of the uh, 18, 20 metre nationals. Uh, some notices from the manager, first of all. Uh, please ensure you leave plenty of space around the water bowser on the south side uh, when you're parking your gliders and trailers overnight. Uh, we want to be easily able to tow a 20 metre glider either side of it so that people can get in if they need to fill up at the bowser. Um, so please leave plenty of space. Um, please stick to the 20 mile an hour speed limit around the airfield. Um, I'm sure anyone that's been to Lashford Cons before will be bored of the broken record, but I'll say it again. Uh, Catering, I missed this slide off uh, yesterday. Uh, Abby and the team from Flight Deck uh, will be uh, providing meals all week. Hopefully you've all found them already. Um, they do some outstanding food. Uh, it's going to be open 8 till at least 8.30 in the evening each day and maybe a bit later some days. Um, you can order a packed lunch if you want to in advance, but you can also just get them on the day. They're doing a number of uh, dinner specials, which you can see there. Uh, and obviously it's all pretty tasty. Um, so please, uh, please help Abby and the team out um, recovering from COVID. Uh, the, uh, the keen to, uh, keen to help us out and uh, keep the club going. On the social side, uh, Mark Davenport and his band up to no good are going to be playing live on Tuesday night. Again, for those that haven't heard them, they're a really, really good band. Um, so we're really lucky to have them coming in for the evening. Uh, Mark's a Lasham member, uh, so uh, I'm sure you can get some requests from them. Uh, we're also hoping to run an open mic night one evening during the week. Uh, some points from me. Uh, gridding. Uh, hopefully you've all found the grid. Um, we are gridding the 18 metres three abreast on the runway. Um, so please, when the first glider gets there, please go to the middle of the row on the cone. Uh, not to one of the edges, uh, and then that will allow a glider to come in either side of you um, and filled up. Hopefully, most of you are pretty familiar with this anyway. Um, the 20 metres a little bit easier just uh, next to each other on the same row, um, so please don't start in the middle. Um, when you're uh, going back and forth to the grid, club flying um, will have started, hopefully, uh, so please just take a bit of care. Don't just cut straight across the grass, because um, you may find yourself right in front of an aerato about to go off. Um, so just think about it before you drive out and follow the perimeter track round. Uh, pilot information, reminder again for those in two-seaters to uh, fill out their P2 name each day. Uh, and then the Pilot Safety Committee, a quick reminder um, in case uh, you have need to speak to them today. Okay, on to the weather and Colin. Thanks, Ed. Just uh, get the screen share up and running. Okay, folks. Um, yeah, it looks like we finally got some weather. Um, this low pressure system that tracked across us yesterday is slow moving out onto the continent. Um, and we're, we're in this gap, and this is something I've seen far too often this year, a gap between weather fronts. Fortunately, this is just a, a weak feature with some rain on it over East Anglia at the moment. And the same with the um, warm front out to the west of us. We're in a light north northwesterly flow across us. Uh, pressure is still fairly low, as you can see from there, that 1,013 with the low, about 1,020 across us. Uh, the TAFs, it's worth just looking at these because there's a couple of things that have popped up just on the Farnborough TAF. 296 knots, what we'd expect, light northwesterly to start off with. And I think as the day goes on, that's going to go a little bit more northerly. So by the time you come back, it'll just be light uh, north or north northwesterly um, for landing. But the bit tacked on the end of the TAF here is the, the Farnborough one. Showers and rain anytime between nine and eighteen hundred hours. And that sort of popped up about an hour ago. And that's certainly true on the Gatwick TAF as well, where they're forecasting potential of showers all day and Heath Road. Anywhere to the west of us and northwest of us. Um, don't appear to have showers, so we're in the drier, better air, um, hopefully for most of the day. Upper winds, they're light northwesterly, 10 knots, I think, at flying heights, maybe 12 knots, uh, according to one other forecast. 
over most of the sort of centre of the country, a bit stronger right out to the west uh, and southwest. Um, but nothing's going to give you too much of a problem today. Sat pick is showing the weak weather front out to the west of us and our gap that we're sat in. These two bright blobs, you've probably been looking at the weather, are patches of rain. And we've just been watching the cloud over the over East Anglia at the moment, and that is tracking almost directly southerly. Won't affect us, it'll be to the east of us, but it'll sort of wipe out um, most of Cambridgeshire and that area there. So that's a, a no-go to start off with. I'll just show you the rainfall radar quickly, and you can see it tracking down over here. Showers just developing on and off in this area east of us, and we'll be keeping an eye on that during the day. Temperature wise, I think we're looking at a very similar temperature to yesterday. 21 degrees, if I'm, I'm really optimistic, 22 uh, in this area here to the west of us and to the northwest of us. Um, and dew points, well, they're about 14s, 15s at the moment, maybe stabilise it you know, when it really gets going at, at about 14. I think if we're lucky down to 13. So temperature split of about seven, maybe eight at best today which it doesn't mean that it takes a while to really get going i think and sort of similar picture with the soundings that um, round here by one o'clock soundings looking okay um three thousand foot cloud base hopefully three and a half above sea level um the best with those sort of temperatures and as the afternoon goes on i think we're going to get less cloud the line's opening up a little bit uh, and again about three and a half thousand feet by the looks of it with the dew points at around about 13. I looked further northwest as well and that looks like it's going to take a lot longer to get going the Aston Downs sort of Nymphsfield area right at that way you know the soundings doesn't look brilliant for there for, for 12 one o'clock but getting better in the afternoon um, that's three, four o'clock. So yeah, three to three and a half thousand foot there by the afternoon. So it may take a while to get going in that direction. Um, West looks best today, but with a, a couple of provisos. Um, and you'll see in a second, cloud amounts. That's probably an hour's time starting to break up here nicely. Bits of spread out as it showed earlier. There is a an inversion at about 7,000 feet, but that'll slowly disappear. Uh, and as the day goes on, we might round here, see spread out to start off with, but thinning out four to six eighths cumulus. Uh, and then out to the west of us, we're expecting you know, some sea air coming in across the Somerset levels um, here with the northwesterly wind. So um, good to the west, but not too far, I think, today. And then by four or five o'clock in the afternoon, still should be quite nice. I suspect cutoff would be from five o'clock onwards, folks. And we are in sort of late August, so we're coming towards the end of the soaring season. In terms of thermal heights, and sky sight are giving the same sort of numbers, really, in the same direction by, by 12 o'clock, it should should have got to sort of 2,000 feet plus. And then by early afternoon, 1,000, 1,200 meters, so three to three and a half thousand feet. And it stays the same in the, this area here for most of the afternoon. And I think nice towards the coast as well, um, but closing off obviously from the west and I think dying by five o'clock onwards. So top meteo and sky site don't quite agree on the, the distance prediction, but similar sort of areas out to the west um, and slightly to the north. So in, in this area here. OK, Ed, back to you. You might, have to, you might have to start your share again, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk through the tasks. Uh, so task sheets, are, hopefully you've all found them. They've been emailed to you, but they're also available on RoboControl. 
uh, and they are also available in control if you want them. Uh, we've got a few different tasks today. So for the 18 meters, uh, we've got an A task of just under 180K, uh, Candover Church, Buddington, Fording Bridge, Longbridge Deverell, uh, Salisbury South, Mitchell Dever, and back to Lasham. Uh, and to give you an idea, this is the uh, task area that all the tasks are going to be flying in. They're all broadly similar, but that's the 18 meter A task. Uh, the 18 meter Bs we're putting back to min distance. Uh, this is if we can't get launched as early as we'd like to, um, to give you a, a decent choice of start times. Um, Candover Church, Bullington, Fording Bridge, Fovent, uh, Mottis Font Station. Andover Southeast and the airfield reference point back to Lasham. Uh, on the 20 metres, uh, somewhere slightly in between, it's kind of just over minimum distance. Uh, different start point at Basingstoke West, but broadly going the same direction. Fording Bridge, Tisbury, Montesford Station, Andover and back to Lasham. Um, all of which sort of bring you back in fairly nicely lined up with the main runway. Uh, over to Colin for airspace. Okay, I'll sneak in on the uh, <clears throat> the edge of uh, Ed's camera here now, and um, really not a lot to say. A one-page uh, brief from me. I promised I'd, I'd reduce it from yesterday. The update then: Potham Airfield still closed with still intense model flying. They'll be making a hay, I think, today, and uh, probably doing a lot of flying. And though I said yesterday, um, 12 foot wingspan, I gather they've got some 15 foot wingspan uh, models there. So they're quite chunky, could spoil your day. Um, Parallel serum, it's active. We are classing it as a penalty zone. ODM ATZ is a penalty zone. Compton box is closed. You're going nowhere near it, but we're telling you anyway. Current airspace file, no change, um, version one. And everything else is as per the briefing yesterday. Uh, any questions through Michael on the, the chat, please? All UK danger areas are penalty zones during their notified active hours. And the exception is, of course, those uh, applicable to helicopters only. That's it from me, uh, as far as airspace is concerned. But a reminder of the frequencies, nothing's changed there. Please prefix all calls with Lasham. Thank you very much, Colin. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about airfield layout and finishing. Um, so hopefully you've all found the grid uh, down at the east end of the airfield. Uh, we're going to be uh, obviously trying to use the peri track as much as possible uh, to go around, and you'll you'll see uh, avoid the uh, kind of the area up here and try and go round on the dirt track at the back of the hangars. Uh, we are set up on the 27 grid uh, relights here to the south of the runway next to the grid if you need one hopefully we won't need them today um hopefully you've all managed to tow out successfully already uh just for airfield operations so we're going to be launching towards the west off of 27 however our plan is that we expect given the fairly strong northerly that most people will want to land with a very slight tailwind component and just coming straight in uh, and landing either on the runway or to the grass to the south of it. Please be aware, though, that club flying will still be happening. While launching will hopefully uh, be stopped while you are on approach, um, you may still find club gliders landing to the north of the runway and approaching from uh, the east. So they'll be coming in the opposite direction to you. So if you find yourself squeezed into a position where you have to land north of the runway, I suggest you aim to land as short as you possibly can and clear off as quickly as possible because you may find club gliders coming the other way. Uh, this is covering the same thing. Club operations are going to be on the north side. Uh, please remember to park your glider out on the south side of the airfield if you're in the competition. Uh, it should make life easier for us in the morning uh, and avoid your glider getting damaged. For finishing, please call 10 kilometres uh, on 131030, which is the Lasham Club frequency. So you'll be able to hear any tugs uh, that are launching club gliders on that frequency. We'll be aiming to not have them launching as you're coming back, but just in case that's a, 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 a bit of redundancy. Um, just be aware for those that don't fly at Lasham, while it's not a difficult site, 
in a strong northerly, you can get quite strong turbulence behind the trees uh, on the kind of in, on the threshold of um, of zero nine. So just be aware of that today. Uh, please land long where you can, uh, and we'll again, as I said yesterday, be visually monitoring finishes for safety. Um, when you get your glider, please try and retrieve it carefully. Uh, avoid driving across um, as much of the landing area as possible when you're um, going to get them, If we, especially if we've got quite a few people coming back together on a fairly short task. Uh, please submit your traces within an hour of landing. Uh, we had a few questions and other points. Uh, so we had a question about uh, the rules around filling water ballast on the grid. Uh, we can't find anything specific in the BGA rules or the local procedures that um, prevent you ballasting on the grid. Uh, I'm not aware of anything like that. Uh, the only rule we're aware of is that you can't dump ballast if we were weighing the gliders. Um, but uh, again, if, if people think we've got that wrong, please let us know where we can find the relevant rules. Um, the other things, just so you're aware, a couple of other competitions going on. Aston Down with the juniors and the regionals, they're going to be tasking to the north of Salisbury Plain Danger Area. So they're going to be very clear of where you're flying. Shouldn't really be any conflict. Uh, and Dunstable will be tasking towards Oxford. Uh, so again, unlikely to uh, see the Dunstable task group today. Um, I think that is it, unless there are any other questions. Uh, first launch will be not before 11 o'clock. Um, realistically, it's probably more likely to be a little bit later than that, um, but uh, just want to get you out there. Uh, last launch, 1800, uh, and next briefing will be 10 o'clock tomorrow. Sorry, hang on. Apologies, I'm just uh, going to get uh, get the chat window up. Uh, car parking while you're on task. Um, please leave your car up near the clubhouse if possible. Um, try and avoid blocking in the trailers in the northeast corner of the airfield. Um, it's extremely frustrating for those uh, who need to uh, park there and avoid parking directly uh, on the uh, edge of the grass at the Perry track because uh, the club flying will be taking place in a relatively narrow section of grass. Uh, so I've got a question from Liz. Are all landings to the east? Uh, so the preference is straight into the east or a circuit landing to the east. Uh, if you are going to land to the west, if you really are that high energy, my suggestion would be that you uh, consider uh, whether you join the club circuit or not. Obviously, we'd prefer you to land on the south side, but um, it, it, yeah, preference be landing to the east. We've got to let you use your judgment, though. Uh, finish ring height, I believe, is on the task sheets at 300 feet, Mike. Uh, what else have we got? I think that's it for questions. Uh, Rich, we'll look at the issue about the uh, gaps between the classes. Um, so uh, take your point there. Thank you. Uh, if there isn't anything else, uh, we will see you out there and hopefully you'll have an excellent day. Um, thank you very much.